come from? Who do, who do you do this for? Why do you do this? And and what would what do you want our listeners mostly to, to gain from this? <laughs> this is where you're going to learn that I'm not an HR person. See, because some HR person would have something really uplifting and inspiring to say right now. But for me, I love you for saying that so much. <laughs> Because for <laughs> I got sent to HR to try to fix me, and it didn't oh work. nice didn't didn't work. Well, you weren't doing so, your job then if you didn't go to HR. <laughs> what I want to do, what I love doing, is helping technical professionals be better leaders. That's actually how I got into the diversity space. Mm-hmm. HR people used to be like, well, you know, they're an engineer, they can't, you know, like mm-hmm. they're just going to be a bad leader. And that's when I realized that if you're going to be a good instructor, you have to be able to adjust your style. Mm-hmm. Um, in the way that people learn Mm -hmm. but this work around diversity and inclusion was just something I was doing on the side you Mm. know people would ask me about it at church community activists would ask me um, to help them and I would and then one year um, I wrote a whole book about it lively paradox an authentic perspective on issues of diversity and inclusion where do I get that it's on Amazon. Okay, okay. You don't have that one? Oh my no. God, that was my seminal work. Oh, okay, okay. But I wrote that book so people would leave me alone. I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to be the black person in the middle of Missouri or Iowa or Nebraska. There's your book. Leave me alone. Yes. And look, I wrote a training guide so you can take the book and have your reflective questions. You can teach this whole thing for $12.95. Like, leave me alone. Like, I was really trying to give it away. In fact, the training guide was free. Okay. I was like, just download the training guide for free. Just leave me. I wrote it to, so you could leave me alone. And then I had <laughs> clients who just wouldn't take no for an answer. That's what they mm-hmm. wanted me to do. So there's a, um, a biblical story that I like to tell about Jonah. Jonah was supposed to go to this town called Nineveh. Mm-hmm. God was sending Jonah to Nineveh. Mm-hmm. Jonah didn't want to go because he didn't think the Ninevites deserved him trying to help save them. Mm-hmm. So Jonah's going to go someplace else, mm-hmm. gets on a different boat, all hell breaks loose on this boat the people find out that jonah's got some issue with god didn't do what god say so they pitch him overboard jonah gotta go jonah ends up in the belly of a well Uh and three days and then jonah you know comes to his senses and is like okay god i'll go to nineveh that's the story i tell when i talk about how i got into diversity and inclusion (laughs) i'm fucking jonah man i don't want to do this i've been in the belly of the whale like i have been there i was like i don't want to go to nineveh and god's like yes you will so you know people Mm. won't let me stop talking about it so i finally just in you know this is a strategy of mine too when the world wants something from me Uh um there's many ways to deliver on your purpose. Yeah. One is the thing that you're just passionate about, but the other is the thing that the world needs from you and that you are just damn, damn good at. And I'm damn good at it. Yeah. And the world wants it from me. Mm-hmm. So I'm over here helping the Ninevites, man. I love it. That's, that's the story. You're leading the Ninevites. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>